hi everyone welcome to the live forex quiz with octa fx my name is ambrose ebuka now before i go over to give you guys uh details about this quiz you can go ahead and type your name and where you're watching me from in the comments so go ahead and type your name and where you're watching me from in the comments So today's quiz will consist of 10 questions, um, amazing questions that will revolve around Forex trading. Someone's saying there's no sound, let me confirm that. So if you can hear me, go ahead and type in the comments your name and where you're watching me from. okay aminu adam from kano state matthew from edo uh, benjamin from nigeria jackson from south africa okiwe from Dubai, destiny from nigeria joshua from nigeria christiana from nigeria shedrak from abuja goodness from kaduna massive welcome guys so we have uh, some amazing bonuses for you guys uh, the most active participants with the highest number of correct answers will receive a hundred dollars to apply knowledge in practice and everyone else will get a super cool trading guide in pdf if you stay active answer my questions in the comments um you would receive you stand a chance to receive a hundred dollars to your octa fx account to boost your trading and for the pdf uh trading guide you attend the live quiz you also stay active and answer my questions in the chat or in the comments and you get your pdf via handbook uh, or pdf handbook via email once the quiz or the forex quiz is over all right this quiz is going to be made up of two parts uh the first part would be where i ask you questions and you know get your answers in the comments the second part would be where i show you these questions review the right answers and also give you detailed explanations so that you can understand better in the meantime you can share this live with your friends and you know invite your friends to participate as well uh, it's also you know amazing and awesome to learn with friends all right so if you're ready go ahead and type i'm ready in the comments let's see if you're ready for part one which is the question section go ahead and type i'm ready in the comments also guys uh while answering the questions you can indicate the particular question you're answering so if number one is you know a b or c you can go ahead and type number one a number one b or number one c okay so indicates the answer with trend how do you identify a downtrend a double bottom b lower highs and lower lows c higher highs and higher lows if you know the answer go ahead and type in the comments how do you identify a downtrend I'm going to check the comments okay Emmanuel Owa says number one is B um Patmos says number one C Adishina says number one is B. Xavier says one A. Elotruku says one B. Destiny says one B. Uh, Arinza says one is B. Christopher says one B. Messi says one is B. Jackson says number one is C. Uh, Christiana says one is B. Thompson says one is B. Keep your answers coming, guys. Uh, well, to know the correct answers of these questions, you'd have to stick with me for part two, which is where I, uh, I will review the right answers and still explain to you guys 
so you can understand better. Second question. Which chart pattern indicates that an initial trend will likely resume? Which chart pattern indicates that an initial trend will likely resume? A. Bilateral chart pattern. B. Continuation chart pattern. And C. Reversal chart patterns. If you know the answer, go ahead and type it in the comments. Okay, Xavier says number two is C. Dio says number two is B. Tony says number two is C. Uh, Chukuma says two is B. Humble says two is C. Sam says number two is B. Favor says two B. Omar says number two is A. Saint Omega says number two is B. Okoye says number two is B. Emmanuel Ime says number two is B. Okay, good luck to everyone of you dropping your answers. I'll still review the right answers in uh, the second section, which is part two. So stick with me. Uh, number three, the third question. What are the three main types of forex analysis? What are the three main types of forex analysis? A. Sentimental, analytical, and constructive. B. Technical, sentimental, and fundamental. C. Analytical, technical, and constructive. What are the three main types of forex analysis? If you know the answer, Use the comments. Aditayo says number three is B. Emmanuel Uwa says number three is B. Uh, Joshua says number three is B. Olamide Bamiro says number three is B. Raymond Peter says number three is B. God's Power Thompson says number three is B. Femi Joshua says number three is B. Sam Chumo says number three is B. Cosmos David says number three is B. Aaron Blankson says number three is A. Christiana says number three is C. Alexi says number three is C. Well, only one of these options can be correct, and I will review the correct option. And the right answer in the second part but for now we're going to move over to question four the fourth question how long does each trading session last for how long does each trading session last for a five hours b nine hours c 24 hours if you know the correct answer go ahead and type in the comments How long does each trading session last for? Jude says number four is C. Chukuma says number four is A. Jackson says number four is C. Colin says number four is A. Dio says four C. Goody says number four is B. Samuel says number four is B. Emmanuel Owa says number four is B. Dlamini says number four is C. Christiana says number four is C. Alexander Anthony says number four is B. Uh, okay. Favor says number four is C. How long does each trading session last for? Is it five hours, nine hours, or 24 hours? I'll review the right answer in part two but keep your answers coming anyway and if you haven't already please share the live the live uh, forex quiz with your friends so that you can learn with them 
um, and learn Forex with them as well. So the fifth question. What gives a trader the ability to buy and sell more units of a currency? What gives a trader the ability to buy and sell more units of a currency? A. Lot size. B. Risk management. And C. Leverage. What gives a trader the ability to buy and sell more units of a currency? Is it lot size, risk management, or leverage? Let me know in the comments. Jude says number five is C. Xavier says number five is A. Chukuma says number five is A. Emmanuel Owa says number five is C. Arinze says number five is C. Raymond Peter says number five is C. Saint Omega says five is C. Xavier says A. Joshua says five is A. Henry Emmanuel says number five is A. Francis says number five is A. Glamini says number five is A. Abubakar says number five is C. Musa just said number five. Okay, the answer. James Abbas says number five is A. Well, Abubakar says number five is A. Okay. All right, guys, keep the answers coming. Um, I'll obviously review the right answer or the right option here in part two. Uh, so stick around. We're moving to the sixth question. And that is What is five mini lots represented as in Forex? What is five mini lots represented as in Forex? A. 0 0.50. B. 0 0.05. And C. 5.00. Let me know in the comments. If you know the answer for number six, what is five mini lots represented as in Forex? Let me know in the comments. Is it A. 0 0.50. B. 0 0.05. Or C. 5.00. Raymond Peter says number six is A. Cospot says number six is A. Messi says number six is B. Akene says number six is A. Goody says number six is A. Mark says number six is B. Praise God says number six is B. Jackson says number six is B. Thompson says 6B. Samuel says number 6 is... Samuel says number 6 is B. Uh, Musa says number 6 is B. Keep the answers coming, guys. Humble says 6 is B. Evans says 6 is B. Blank and says number six is A. All right, guys, I'll reveal the answers to these questions in the second part. So stick around. Uh, more, importantly, more importantly, so you can find out the correct answers to these questions and increase your knowledge in trading. The seventh question Who developed the RSI indicator? Who developed the RSI indicator? A. Richard Steve Isaac. B. John Welles, Welles Wilder. And C. Jeremy Powell. Who developed the RSI indicator? Richard Steve Isaac, John Welles Wilder, or Jeremy Powell? Let me know in the comments if you know the right answer. Chukuma says number seven is B. Xavier says seven is C. Ayolua says number seven is A. Aaron says seven A. Jackson says seven A. Xavier says seven is C. 
Charles says 7 is C. Lamini says 7 is A. Castel says 7 is A. Okay, Esther says 7 is B. Goodness says number 7 is C. David Matthew says 7 is B. Samuel says 7 is B. Read one says number 7 is B. Gothic says 7 is B. He says I'm sure. We'll find out in the second part, in part 2, which options is correct. So moving over to question 8. All these are risk management steps, except all these are risk management steps, except A. Use of conservative lot size. B. Use of stop loss orders. And C. Trading with instinct. All these are risk management steps, except is it use of conservative lot size? Is it use of stop loss orders? Or is it trading with instincts? If you know the answer, let me know. Xavier says A to C. Steven says A to C. Samuel says A to C. God's power says number A to C. Let's see. Uh, Henry says number eight is A. Jackson says number eight is C. Emmanuel says eight is C. And Favor, or oh, Favor is answering for number seven, says so seven is B. Uh, Evan says eight is B. I'll definitely review the right, the right answers in part two. So stick around. Question 9. What is a limit order? What is a limit order? A. A limit on the number of trades that can be placed in a day. B. An order to buy below or sell above the market price. Or C. An order to buy and sell with a limited lot size. If you know the answer for number 9, go ahead and type in the comments. What is a limit order? Is it a limit on the number of trades that can be placed in a day? An order to buy below or sell above the market price? Or an order to buy and sell with a limited lot size? Let's look at the comments. Henry Manuel says number 9 is B. Black Goody says number nine is B. Olive says nine is B. Technic says nine is B. Okichiku says nine is B. Samuel says number nine is B. Well, only one of these options can be correct, and I will review that in part two we're moving over to the last question guys but keep your answers coming if you know the answers for number nine we're moving over to question number ten okay so this has to do with some calculations and you can definitely uh, take your time uh, before you answer for number ten if i open a sell order on euro usd at 0 0.9570 and i set if i open a sell order on euro usd at 0 0.950570 and i set a target for 467 pips profit what would be or what would my target price be 
if i open a sell order on euro usd at 0 0.9570 and i set a target for 467 pips profit what would my target price be a 0 0.9103 b 1.0037 and c 0 0.9113 if you know the correct answers go ahead and type in the comments let's look at the comments uh, james says number 10 is b olamide says number 10 is a imano says number 10 is b Bobby says number 10 is C. Divine Isaac says number 10 is A. Okechuku okay, says number 10 uh, didn't answer. Just said 10. You guys always remember to put the answers of your of the question. You know, if it's A, B, or C, you say number 10 is A, B, or C. Uh, Saint Omega says number 10 is B. Favor says number 10 is B. Aditya or Badmo says number 10 is B. All right, guys, we've come to the end of the first part. Remember, we have two parts. The first part where I uh, ask you guys questions. And the second part, which is where I tell you guys the correct answers to these questions. So let's move over to part two uh, so that I can reveal the right answers of these questions. If you're ready for part two, go ahead and type I'm ready in the comments. If you're ready for part two. All right, all right, all right. Let's go for part two. So the first question. How do you identify a downtrend? How do you identify a downtrend? And the options were double bottom, uh, lower highs and lower lows, and higher. If you didn't answer correctly, that's fine. You've learned something today. If you answered correctly, congratulations. I'm just going to go ahead and explain what we mean by lower highs and lower lows, right? So in the Forex market, we have what we call an uptrend and a downtrend, right? These trends are made up of swing highs and swing lows. Now for the uptrend, it's made up of higher highs and higher lows and for the downtrend it's made up of lower highs and lower lows and it's, it's called that because if you look at this low let's say for example let's start from this high this lower high you have a lower high right here and you have a lower low right here what this means is that this low is lower than the previous low and the market pushed back up to create a lower high what this means is that this low or this high rather this high is lower than this high right and has created another high that is lower than this high and another low that is lower than this previous low so when the market makes a series of lower highs and lower lows just like you have here then you can call that a downtrend right if it makes uh higher highs and higher lows you can call that an uptrend Okay, so if you answered that correctly, congratulations. And if you didn't, you've learned something today. Uh, the second question was, what pattern indicates that an initial trend will likely resume? Which chart pattern indicates that an initial trend will likely resume? And the options were bilateral chart pattern, continuation chart pattern, reversal chart pattern, right? So which of these options were correct? <coughs> so the correct answer is continuation chart pattern right so bilateral chart patterns are patterns that indicate or uh, that can give you as a trader a signal that would move a uh, trend right and the reversal chart pattern basically tells you as a trader the potential as a trader that the market will likely resume or continue in its initial trend that's why we have the correct answer for number two to be a continuation chart pattern um or moving to the upside you have the flag pattern forming and then what happens the market formed and it's giving you an indication that price would likely move or continue to the downside so if you got that correctly congratulations
Alright, uh, if you can hear me, go ahead and type in the comments. I had a little uh, technical issue that I just fixed. So if you can hear me, go ahead and type in the comments that you can hear me. I just want to be sure before I continue with the explanation that you can hear me. So if you can hear me, go ahead and uh, type in the comments that you can hear me correctly. all right all right everybody can hear me okay great 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 all right guys um so i was just explaining uh the continuation chart pattern and i said that in a continuation chart pattern it just indicates uh that price would likely continue in its initial trend uh, for example you have something like the bullish flag pattern here and you see that it's coming uh, from an uptrend it is pushing to the upside the flag pattern has been formed and this can be an indication that a uh, price would continue to the upside okay these are examples of some continuation chart patterns we have the bullish flag pattern we have the bullish penance pattern we have the bullish falling wedge and for bearish we have the bearish flag pattern and the bearish penance pattern and the bearish rising wedge so the answer for number four or oh, number two the answer for number two is continuation chart pattern so we're going to move over to number three at the question for number three okay so what are the three main types of forex analysis right the options were sentimental analytical and constructive technical sentimental and fundamental and analytical technical and constructive so let's see which of these answers are correct so the correct answer for number three is technical sentimental and fundamental analysis so technical analysis basically uh, is an analysis that is used by forex traders to analyze and make forecast of the direction of prices you know by using uh, or by by studying uh, historical price data you know looking at what's happened before or uh, you looking at what you see on your chart and you know analyzing the market primarily by looking at you know the price looking at the volume of the chart you know just it's basically technical analysis is basically trading uh by studying historical price data right where has markets been before how did markets react to these places that it has been before that can give you an idea of what would happen in the future sentimental analysis basically is an analysis that quantifies what or how many uh traders or what percentage of uh, forex traders are bullish or bearish you know this involves just concentrating or or looking at the measurement or gauging how many forex traders are buying how many forex traders are selling you know in the forex market that's sentimental analysis right and then fundamental analysis is basically analyzing the market by going through reports from economical events social events political events you know like you, like you have election you have economical events like uh, recession or inflation and all that you can use this uh analysis to understand what's going on in the economy and that's what fundamental analysis is all about so number three the correct answer for number three is b it's not uh constructive or analytical or any of that so three main types of analysis technical sentimental and fundamental analysis question four i mean by the way if you got it correctly congratulations and if you didn't um well you've learned something today so congratulations as well <laughs> so number four how long does each trading session last for how long does each trading session last for a five hours b 24 hours and c nine hours these were the options right so what's the correct answer the correct answer is c nine hours so if you don't know already uh in forex we have i mean the forex market is open 24 hours five days a week but we also have what we call uh trading times and session i'm going to give you guys like a graphical representation of, representation of what that means 
uh, which you can see on your screen right now so we have what we call trading times and sessions now currencies are traded 24 hours a day five days a week around the world the trading market opens monday morning in wellington new zealand and stays open till the friday night in new york usa each trading day can be divided into three sessions three main sessions uh, but we've just divided this one into four so you can understand better uh, depending on the financial center active during a specific period the time each session opens and closes at is based on the local business hours just like you have nigeria right so let's say the banks open at 8 a.m and close by 5 p.m right 8 a.m to 5 p.m in nigeria is not going to be the same with 8 a.m to 5 p.m in new york right it's not going to be the same with 8 a.m to 5 p.m in tokyo for example and these are business hours so if you look at the opening time of each of this session and we have sydney session tokyo session london session and new york session if you look at the opening time of each of these sessions you would see that they last for nine hours right Sydney session opens at 10 p.m and closes at 7 a.m so if you do the calculation it closes at nine hours from its opening time same for the tokyo session london and new york session and the times you see on your screen are listed in gmt plus one uh, so you can do like a conversion to your country's time to understand or to identify when uh, you know the Sydney session will open in your country's time and the Tokyo session, London session and New York session as well. Now the Forex markets opening and the closing hours will change in March and November as countries move to daylight savings. Uh, you can always check the OctaFX website to identify uh, the change in this trading times. And if you already use OctaFX, you would know that uh, you get these notifications on your email um, when there are changes in uh, the, the trading calendar. So the answer for number four is C, nine hours. If you got that correctly, congratulations. And if you didn't, well, you've learned something today. So we're going to move over to number five, question number five. What gives a trader the ability to buy and sell more units of a currency by the way if you have questions uh, we're going to have a section for question and answers so i would take your questions at the end of part two so what gives a trader the ability to buy and sell more units of a currency a lot size b risk management and c leverage Let's look at the correct answer first. <laughs> I was about to explain. The correct answer is C, leverage, right? Leverage gives a trader the ability to buy and sell more units of a currency. Now, I, you know, I saw some answers. Some some people said uh, A, lot size. I saw some options that were lot size. Now, lot size is the measure in units. Is the measure in units of it, it looks like basically i'm going to give you guys like uh also a graphical uh presentation of what that looks like but lot size is the measure in units of a currency you want to buy or sell right we have like mini lots standard lots uh micro lots which i'm also going to show you guys but it's like the measure in units how many units of this currency do you want to buy or sell right but leverage gives you the ability to actually buy that amount of units so with leverage you can buy up to a hundred thousand units of currencies even on a hundred dollar account you know so leverage is like an advantage that helps you buy and sell more units of a currency leverage also has its it's like a two-edged sword um, so it's important that when you take advantage of leverage provided to you uh, you also uh, apply proper risk management steps uh, which would help you mitigate the effect of unsuccessful trades on your trading account so the answer for number five is c leverage let's look at uh question number six what is five mini lots represented as in forex what is five mi mini lots represented as in forex like i said guys we have uh standard lots mini lots and micro lots which i'll show you guys uh, but the options were 0 0.50 0 0.05 and 5.00 so let's see which of these answers or which of these options is the right answer 
so the correct answer is option a 0 0.50 option a 0 0.50 so like i said guys we have a standard lots we have mini lots and we have micro lots these are the three main types of lot sizes that we have in the forex market and with a standard lot with one standard lot you can buy a hundred thousand you can buy and sell a hundred thousand units of a currency with uh, a mini lot size one mini lot size you can buy or sell ten thousand units of a currency uh, with a micro lot size one micro lot size you can buy one thousand buy or sell one thousand units of a currency now if you look at the representation you will see that the standard lot is represented by one one standard lot is represented by 1.00 right and one mini lot is represented by 0 0.10 and one micro lot is represented by 0 0.01 now if you look at the question the question was what is five mini lots represented as in forex so one mini lot is represented as 0 0.10 right this means that two mini lots would be represented as 0 0.20 so that's why we have our correct answer to be 0 0.50 because the question is what is five mini lots represented as in forex one mini lot is 0 0.10 four mini lots would be 0 0.40 and five mini lots is 0 0.50 so if you got it correctly congratulations and if you didn't that's still fine you've learned something today you've added to your knowledge of the foreign exchange market question seven who developed the rsi indicator who developed the rsi indicator richard steve isaac john willis wilder or jeremy powell let's look at who the, uh what the correct answer is so the correct answer is b john willis wilder developer of the rsi indicator the rsi indicator simply means relative strength index it tells you when the market is overbought it tells you when the market is oversold so it's not uh jeremy powell jeremy powell is you know an american attorney and also an investment banker that has served as the 16th chair of the federal reserve since 2018 so the developer of the rxi indicator is john willis wilder um, he's also known as the father of some popular indicators used in the forex market which includes the atr indicator the average true range uh the rsi which is the relative the relative strength index the average directional index the adx and the parabolic SAR so the correct answer for number seven is john wellis wilder so if you got that correctly congratulations as well and uh if you didn't you've learned something today let's move over to question eight moses said i feel this one that's fine you've, you've learned something today so you've improved your knowledge about the forex market all these are risk management steps except a use of conservative lot size b use of stop loss orders and c trading with instincts trading with instincts let's look at the correct answer the correct answer for number eight is trading with instincts okay so risk management steps are basically steps that that you apply to your trade it's the effects of unsuccessful trades and this can be use of conservative lot size so by conservative is basically uh you know doing things or engaging in practices that can guarantee stability uh so with with a conservative lot size you're using a lot size that can reduce your risk exposure in the market uh, and can also uh you can also use the lot size the conservative lot size to take advantage of leverage and make more profit in the market but most importantly 
with a conservative lot size you're reducing your risk and by reducing your risk which is why it's called conservative by reducing your risk you can stay longer in the market trade more and make more profit stop loss orders are orders that you give your broker or instructions that you give your broker to stop you out if the market goes against you you know stop you out at your preferred price at a certain point that's going to halt further advance in loss so that uh you don't lose a lot of money you just tell your broker i want to get stopped out here if the market goes against me and even if you're offline your broker would automatically stop you out at that your preferred price that you have imputed okay so it's it's obviously uh, 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 you use your instincts uh, instincts it has to do with luck sometimes and luck is not a strategy or hope is not a strategy or guess working or guessing is not a strategy in the forex market okay so correct answer for number eight is c trading with instincts that is not a risk management step if you got that correctly congratulations all right let's go to number nine what is a limit order that was the question what is a limit order a a limit on the number of trades that can be placed in a day b an order to buy below or sell above the market price or c an order to buy and sell with a limited lot size let's look at the answer for number nine So the answer for number nine the correct answer for number nine is an order to the trade would not be executed until market price has gotten to your preferred price so we have some limit orders like uh sell limits and buy limits we also have uh pending orders like buy stop and sell stop right so with a with a buy stop let's start with buy stop so with a buy stop you basically uh the buy stop is basically an order that is placed above the current market price right so if market price is let's say this, where my uh, cursor is at the time somewhere around here this line signifies like an area where your buy stop order would be placed for a buy stop order you're placing above the market price in anticipation that the market price would get to your preferred price which is where you've placed this buy stop order execute and continue to move to the upside okay market price around here your pending order which is a buy stop above the market price and you're anticipating that the market price would get to your ex your preferred price which is where you've placed your pending order and continue to move to the upside right a sell stop is placed below the current market price right so remember let's say where my cursor is at the time is where market price is and uh your sell stop is placed below in anticipation that market price would get down to your sell stop order execute and continue to move to the downside for a limit order you're placing your sell limit order above the market price in anticipation that market price would get to your pending order your sell limit order execute or activate and start to move to the downside if you move to the downside then you can make a profit and for your buy limits you're placing your buy limit order below the market price in anticipation that sorry guys let's take this back in anticipation that you're placing your buy limit order below the market price in anticipation that market price will get to will get down below to your pending order your buy limit order and move to the upside for you to make a profit okay <clears throat> so if you got that correctly congratulations and um if you didn't well that's just an added um knowledge to you know that's just an added knowledge to your <laughs> uh forex knowledge <laughs> or an added information to your forex knowledge anyway so uh the last question question 10 if i open a sell order on euro usd at 0 0.9570 
and I set a target for 467 pips profit, what would my target price be? And we had options A, 0 0.9103, options B, 1.0037, and option C, 0 0.9113. Let's see which one is the correct answer. So the correct answer is A, 0 0.9103. Free, right so this is uh like i said guys the tenth question has to do with calculations and uh, i'm just going to go over how we got a as the correct answer so we have typical pairs in the markets we have jpy pairs which are japanese yen pairs and we have gold or metals right now typical pairs are you know pairs that are merged or pairs that are associated with USD, you know, pairs that have like four digits after the decimal point, uh, and then plus the pipette, which is one extra digit, but that's not, uh, we're not going to count that. So typical pairs have like four digits after, this, after the decimal point. You can, you can use the same formula to calculate all typical pairs. Then JPY pairs are pairs that are associated with the Japanese yen like the euro jpy the card jpy aid jpy and all that right the pairs that are associated with the japanese yen and we have metals like gold that are paired with uh dollar or euro right or you have silver as well but uh for this question we're looking at a typical pair right it's euro usd and this is because it is per it look if you count the number of digits after the decimal point it's one two three four it's a typical pair it's paired with it's associated with uh it's associated with usd so we're going to use the formula for calculating typical pairs to calculate euro usd and the formula is 0 0.0001 for one pip i'm going to give you guys an explanation right now so uh pay attention so the formula for euro usd uh not euro card euro usd formula for one pip is 0 0.0001 that's for one pip which means formula for five pips would be 0 0.0005 formula for 10 pips would be 0 0.0010 and for 50 pips would be 0 0.0050 formula for 100 pips would be 0 0.0100 formula for 400 pips would be 0 0.0400 right so with this formula you can use to either identify your take profit targets or your stop loss targets you can use it to basically calculate uh the pips right the increase in the movement of a, a typical uh, currency pair right so we're looking at euro usd which i end the order that was opened was a sell order right and we're looking at euro usd opened at 0 0.9570 0 0.9570 this was the entry price right remember it's a sell order and the profit target was set for 467 pips right so look at this uh, illustration now for a buy order to get the profit for a buy order you add to get the risk or your stop loss for a buy order you subtract right for a sell order to get the profit you subtract and to get your risk or your stop loss you add now the question said we sold euro usd at 0 0.950 and the profit target was set for 467 pips now if you're looking at if you're looking for profits on a sell trade on euro usd that means we have to subtract right so what are we subtracting exactly we're going to take the exact same formula the exact same formula i showed you guys if you look at formula for 400 pips 0 0.0400 right the profit target was set for 467 pips so we're just going to subtract 467 pips using this formula 0 0.0467 remember 400 pips would be 0 0.0400 but 
we're using 467 pips so the formula is 0 0.0467 we're going to subtract, subtract this from the entry price and that's how we got 0 0.9103 as our profit target okay so that's how we got the answer 0 0.9103 and the answer for number 10 is option a so if you got that correctly congratulations if you didn't uh well you still learned something today so i still have to congratulate you as well um guys we've come to the end of the live forex quiz with octa fx i'm we're going to move over to like a q a session where i take your questions if you have questions i'll be looking at the comment section to answer your questions so if you have questions go ahead and type your questions in the comment section i'm just checking to answer a few questions and uh we'll wrap up so if you have questions guys go ahead and ask your questions in the comments i'm checking the comments right now to see if you guys have questions all right let's look at the what affects the forex market um gothic is asking what affects the forex market the forex market is affected by uh, you know a lot of things it can be some economic factors um like i said inflation or recession or economic growth as well um it can also be social it can be political factors like election you know so these are some things that can affect the forex market and you know that um when there are changes in an economy uh it definitely or it will definitely affect the currency of that country and this is why you should also pay attention to um, fundamental analysis, pay attention to economic events, you know, like CPI. Uh, you can also pay attention to GDP and NFP, which is the unemployment rate of the US, to give you an indication of the strength or weakness of the economy. And that can also give you, you know, an indication of, or, or uh, an identification of uh, areas to buy or sell a particular currency in which time frame the one gets the downtrend or uptrend so in the forex market the downtrend or uptrend can be formed on any time frame right the market moves on all time frames but to get like a an overall view of the trend to identify the overall direction of the trend um, you can look at the higher time frames like the daily time frame the weekly time frame and you can also use the four hour time frame as well uh, to you know just higher time frames daily and weekly majorly to identify the overall direction of the trend i'm just going to take one more question and uh <clears throat> Ibrahim says, how can I be a professional trader and earn big money? 
so being profitable with trading uh, or to be profitable with trading first you must be well, you should be educated you know you should understand the, the education the educational process is just so that you don't come on the charts and start clicking buys or sales or start guessworking you know with the educational process you actually download information you know just learn how to come on the charts and identify areas where you know you can buy identify areas where selling opportunities would be provided or could be provided and you take your trade and being profitable is not just only about analyzing right you can also look at uh, fundamental factors like like i said the economic events uh being profitable also has to do with your trading psychology uh, having a trading plan as well this would help you el eliminate uh emotion trading or greed you know or revenge trading so it's like a step by step process um, but most importantly you need to be educated and you need to understand risk management and trader psychology and you should also have a trading plan uh that can guide you on when how many trades to place when to place trades when not to place trades uh your trading plan can also consist of your withdrawal plan you know how much do you want to withdraw in a week in a month however it is your trading system looks like that can guide you all right guys thank you very much for participating in the octa fx live forex quiz if you want to learn more about forex uh, you can visit the link in description the english playlist uh, to learn more about forex trading and also like subscribe and share this video so that you don't miss out on the new episodes and